Hi there, my name is Paige and I am the author of Milk and Honey Ministries and this video is going to be how to become a princess in the eyes of God. And so, so often in this world we're taught how to be princesses maybe to attract boys or to be cooler or whatever it may be, um, but in the end the only one that we actually need to impress is in fact Jesus Christ. And so um, we are going to be using Psalms 73 and 74. Um, this is my big leather Bible. Um, I've been trying to read it every day even if it's just one chapter because it's the living word, word of God. Um, but we're going to be using those two Psalms just to kind of back up all of the reasonings that I have um, to be the best princesses that we can be as young women. And so um, the first and foremost way to become a princess in the eyes of God is to have a pure spirit. And so I'm going to be using two verses just to back this up. The first is, did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? And if you're a Christian and you're a young woman, I'm sure that you've asked yourself these questions at some point. I know that I have a lot. Um, and so I can't help but think, God, I am trying to say no to all of these um, different temptations or whatever it may be and is it all for nothing um, because I see how so many people are out having fun and having a good time um, what is this really for and is it really worth it um, but if you move on down a little bit further down 73 of the Psalms it says you guide me with your counsel you hold me with your right hand whom have I in heaven but you I desire you more than anything on earth leading me to a glorious destiny and so I just want to encourage all of you young women that even though sometimes um, it may seem like it's hopeless or like it's meaningless, um, God has a glorious destiny for you and God loves those who serve him. And so that's number one. It's so important to have a pure spirit before God um, because he loves that and that is a great way to become a princess in the eyes of um, the beholder. So number two, um, a lot of you are probably familiar with Proverbs 31, and one of the verses is, A godly woman laughs without fear of the future. Um, and so going to the Psalms to back that up, um, there's a verse here, 7320, and it says, You will laugh at their silly ideas as a person laughs at dreams in the morning. And what that verse is, describing as people that are ignoring God, people that aren't following him, because once you become a Christian, you are in his perfect will, and he starts to guide you every single step of your life. But if you're not being guided by God, then you're going to be coming up with your own silly ideas. And so this verse is saying that God is going to be laughing at those who are coming up with their own ideas and trying to make their um, path straight on their own. Um, and it may work for a short time, for a season. Someone that's not uh, actively following God may find success um, throughout this life, but, um, you know, come the morning time, things will probably fall flat if they're not giving God um, the reins of their lives. And so I just encourage all of you women to, just like Proverbs 31 says, laugh without fear of the future because you may not know what your future holds, but you do know who holds your future, and that is Jesus Christ. And so just give it all to him. Um, that's what he asks of us. He says you don't have to worry about tomorrow because he'll take care of all the details. Um, number three is that um, God loves a woman who makes him her number one man. And this is something that I struggle with a lot, actually, um, because growing up, I was always one of those girls who um, needed a boyfriend in order to think that I was beautiful, in order to tell me that I was beautiful, just because I didn't believe it on my own. I wasn't um, actively following Christ. Um, and so since I've become a Christian, it's been about three and a half years now, I have tried to place him on that pedestal that I was otherwise um, placing boys on. Um, and so going on dates with Jesus, they really, from experience, they are the best dates that you can possibly go on because it's the only thing that 100% fills you up and never sucks anything out of you. Um, and so whether those dates are, you know, every morning with your cup of tea and your highlighters and your candles and your music. Sometimes I listen to country music when I'm reading the Bible. It's all totally your own thing. Um, but like I said before, this is the living, breathing Word of God. This is like the love letter that God gave us. Um, and so reading it every day, even if it is just a couple of verses um, or a chapter, um, that's what we need to um, help spur us on and fill us up for tomorrow um, because otherwise um, we're going to be just trying to live this life on our own and that's not um, what God offers. God offers a life that's um, 
free of heavy burdens. Um, not to say that everything's going to be easy, but he gives us a light burden, which is loving him, and he'll take on all those struggles that we deal with that we otherwise wouldn't be able to do on our own um, as well in any way. So the next way, number five, um, is to be classy and to be elegant women. Um, and so, so often in this world it tells us that we have to look a certain way or, um, you know, act a certain way in order to be classy, in order to be elegant. And I do agree, I think that it's very important for women of God to, you know, take care of themselves and do the best that they can. Um, but Psalm 73, towards the end, verse 26 it says, my health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. And so a classy and elegant heart is sometimes different than classy and elegance on the outside. And God looks at the heart. God doesn't see us for our appearance or what we look like on the exterior because once we reach heaven, we're all going to be given new bodies anyways, and it's going to be a whole new ball game. And so in order to have a classy and elegant heart, we can place our strength in God, even if even if our health may fail, even if our spirit may grow weak, even if, um, you know, we're struggling with, um, you know, trying to be the best that we can, um, appearance-wise, God looks at our heart. And so that's what um, he's looking at for number one in order to be um, his princess. So um, give him your heart and he'll make you as classy and elegant as can be um, in the interior. So another way in order to um, be a princess in the eyes of God is to swim upstream while the world is swimming downstream. And so that means that we, as Christian women, sometimes need to do opposite of what the world is telling us is cool or is attractive or is fun or whatever it may be. So um, here's a good verse in 73, 4 and 5. It says, They seem to live such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. They don't have troubles like other people. They're not plagued with problems like everyone else. And so what this verse is describing is people that aren't following God, that are doing what they want, um, and it seems like they're prospering. And you've probably seen this as well, even with reality shows or whatever it may be, people that are um, not actively pursuing a godly life. And it seems like they're having all the fun and that we're missing out on everything. Um, and so what this verse um, describes is um, us thinking as Christians that, we may not be living life to the fullest like those people are that aren't following God. But this verse, when you go down, um, or this chapter rather, it starts to describe how those people will one day fall and those that are following Christ will be raised up just like Jesus was raised up. And Jesus was the perfect example of a servant. He came in and he could have been the highest and mightiest of all. He could have came in and made himself a king, worn a crown, done everything that he wanted, had people bow down to him, but instead he started to work his way down the ladder, started to swim upstream rather than downstream like everyone else. Um, and then because of that, he was raised up by God and he's now at the right hand of the Father um, forevermore. And so, um, be humble before God and trust that even if things may not look very bright right now, that God has got it handled for you. So the last way in order to make yourself like a princess before God is to make this life an adventure. Um, so often in our Christian walks, I've noticed um, Christian women can sometimes just get stagnant or bored in their walk and they think, well, this is all there is and, um, you know, life isn't fun when I'm following Christ. Um, but the truth is that it's the most fun and life is honestly like a roller coaster when you give God everything. And so in Revelation, Jesus says that he doesn't want us to be lukewarm. He doesn't want us to be, um, he wants us to either be hot or be cold. And so either be on fire for him or stop pretending like you're a Christian when you, your heart isn't in it. And so um, the moral of that is basically saying, run after God, trust that he can give you an exciting life of, um, of worshiping him and of telling others about him. And that's the beauty, um, the only the beauty of living a life as a Christian, because you may be um, an earthly princess. You may win, you know, a beauty pageant or you may be, you know, so cool, but come eternity, that's all going to be lost. And so the real way to become an actual princess is to worship and follow the king and become a daughter of the king. And the only real king that there is, is Jesus Christ. And so all of you Christian women that are following him, you are princesses, even though you may not believe it. You are a princess, and one day we're going to be giving crowns, and we're going to lay it down at the Father's feet, um, because that's our Father, and that's um, that's God, and that's following Jesus Christ. And so I just want to encourage all of you that 
God loves you and God has a plan for you. Um, and even though sometimes you may feel like your life is worthless or that you are worthless or that um, all of your efforts are just going nowhere, just trust that God is holding you in the palm of his hand and that he loves you so much. And so even if you're not a Christian, I just ask you to ask Jesus into your heart because it'll be a whole new life. Um, and so I thank you guys again. Um, check out my blog. It's um, milkandhoneyministries.com. And it's not the word and, it's just N. So milkandhoneyministries.com. Um, you can um, you know comment on anything and let me know what you're thinking. Um, and I'm just so grateful that you guys listened to my video. And I love you all. And I can't wait to see you that I don't know in heaven one day. So God bless you and thank you so much for watching.